to the cloud. All right, we are recording. So I will introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. My name is Angie and um, I've been a nurse for over 10 years. Um, first of all, let me know, Kelly's on here to help us with uh, the chat. So if you're new to Zoom, um, please mute yourself. It just kind of helps with the background noise, keeps the distractions down. And then if you have questions, pop those into the chat feature and Kelly's gonna help us out by keeping up on those. Um, but I would love to hear some feedback if you guys have um, any questions or any testimonies on things we're talking about, I would love to hear it. Um, but again, my name is Angie. I've been a nurse for over 10 years. So I've been trained on the current medical model, you know, the biology, anatomy. But what we typically focus on is problems, conditions, diseases, and how to fix them after they're broken. So that's where my training comes from. Um, and then during all of my time when I was working in the hospital, I just started noticing people were getting sicker, they were staying longer. And I started just asking my, asking questions like, why are people so much sicker? And why are there so many new diagnoses? I was seeing patients come in with things I'd never heard of before, even from nursing school, never heard of these things. And why is it so prevalent? People were coming in younger and sicker. And so I just started doing my own research and started to uh, <coughs> realize that there's there's environmental changes, there's our food is being more processed, it's not as natural as it used to be years ago, our air is more polluted, there's more chemicals in our everyday products. And so I just started asking, what, what could I do to help support my body to do what it was created to do? So um, I just started doing research. So I'm no expert, I'm not a physician, I'm not here to diagnose or treat anything. I just did research for myself and I referenced several books for the, on the topics that I'm going to talk about today. And I just, I'm just really passionate about empowering people to do their own research. We have to be our own health advocates. Uh, we have to, you know, we know our bodies better than anyone else. The, and that's not to, to bad mouth the medical model or physicians or anything, you know, I still work in that field. I'm still part of it. I still believe in it. I believe there's a place for it, but doctors don't, can't know everything about every system. You know, they're very intelligent people and they want to help us, but they don't know everything about everything. So uh, just listen to your body and do your own research. And if something just doesn't seem right, speak up and do your own research on it. Um, and get it from a reputable source. Uh, PubMed has some really good articles, uh, research-based. So tonight I'm gonna be sharing about the digestive system. And you might be thinking, wow, what an exciting topic. We're gonna be talking about our gut. But let me tell you, it does more than digest our food and eliminate things. Um, it's actually, you know, all of our systems are interconnected, but the digestive system specifically affects so many more things, uh, namely our immune system. So all of us are trying to um, support our immune systems right now. So I'm just gonna be sharing my own testimonials. Many of you know that I, I use Young Living products. I just wanna have a disclaimer. This is not a sales pitch. I'm just here to share what's worked for me. And uh, many of you are already Young Living members, so I'm just gonna share about some of the products that I've used. Maybe you'll learn some new things about it. If you're not familiar with the Young Living, just reach out to whoever invited you to this and um, they can get you started. So I'm just gonna share my testimonial. Some of it's Young Living stuff, some of it's not. Some of it's just lifestyle changes. Um, so Hopefully you grabbed a pen and paper because I'm gonna give you some tips that you're gonna want to remember and write down. So I'm gonna start with just a basic biology lesson and I promise I won't get too nerdy on you. So stay with me um, and I won't talk about anything gross. I always have to, to uh, have that disclaimer for any discussion because my husband tells me I get too nursey on people. So, um, so the digestive system really starts you know, it's not just your stomach and colon. It starts with the mouth, the teeth, the saliva, and your whole GI tract. And, you know, obviously it goes all the way out the bottom. So the goal of that entire process is to break down food into smaller particles 
so that it can be properly absorbed into the body. So properly is the key word there. So it needs to stay moving. So it's not, its function is not only just to digest our food and absorb the good nutrients, it, it also functions to remove waste and toxins. So obviously we wanna get those moving out of our body. So the goal is to have one to two good bowel movements a day. So a good bowel movement means fully formed, easy to pass and floats. So those are the three things that you wanna watch for. Um, and just some lifestyle recommendations because you realize that you should, we should all be just as a baseline, drinking half of our body weight in water in ounces. So if a person weighs 150 pounds, half of that is 75, 150 pound person should be drinking 75 ounces of water a day. And notice I said water, not coffee, not tea, not Mountain Dew. <laughs> I currently work in urology and people think as long as it's fluid, that counts. Let me tell you, that does not count. Water means water. Um, so half of our body weight in water in ounces. We also want to minimize white flour. So think about what happens with white flour when you mix it with water, it turns to glue. So think about that, what that does in your digestive system. Like I said, we wanna keep that digestive system moving. We don't want glue in there. So minimize white flour. Uh, minimize dairy and sugar. Those are both very inflammatory products. So we don't want that intestine to be inflamed and we don't want glue in there. And the last thing is exercise, just move. You don't have to join a fancy gym. You don't have to have fancy equipment. <clears throat> just get up and move. I know we're getting into winter. It's hard to get outside. Uh, we're not even shopping anymore. You know, normally I would recommend parking at the far end of a parking lot and walking into the store, but we're not really even shopping anymore. So I, it may sound crazy, but I literally have been known to just do laps in my house. I go from living room to dining room to kitchen to living room to dining room to kitchen. And I will just walk circles for like five minutes every couple of hours if I'm, if I'm stuck inside just get up and move because you need um, your lymph system is a whole other talk that I'm doing a class on later in the in the week you know our lymph system transports our lymph which uh, we actually have more lymph in our body than we do blood but the lymph system does not have a pump so we have to be moving to move that stuff um, a lot of us are working from home now so we're not even getting outside to get in a car to drive to work we're sitting all day long so just get up and move even if it's just pumping your ankles or um, walking from room to room like I said so um, the digestive system I mentioned in my description that it's sometimes been called the second brain because it has so many other important functions so um, actually 70 percent of our immune system is in the gut and gut meaning like stomach and colon. So again, very important for our immune function. It also is very supportive for skin issues. So psoriasis, eczema, that kind of stuff. If you have any skin issues going on, check into your gut health. Your gut health has a lot to do with skin issues. Um, so we talked about proper absorption earlier. So you've probably heard the term, the SAD diet, standard American diet. Um, the way our food is processed now is so much different than it used to be that even if we do eat, quote, perfectly or really healthy, we're eating, you know, minimizing our red meat, we're minimizing our flour, sugar, and dairy, we're eating lots of fruits and vegetables, even if we're eating all the good stuff, our food just does not contain the same nutrients that it used to. So we need to supplement. Actually, most disease can be linked to deficiencies in vitamins and minerals and an overload of toxins. So again, we're not getting enough of the good in and we're not getting all of the bad out. So basically it goes down to, we need to increase the good, decrease the bad, which means we need to keep our digestive system moving. So back to supplementation. About 90% of supplements bought today over the counter are not fully bioavailable. So not able, our bodies are just not able to absorb them. Why? Because they're mostly synthetic. So our body doesn't know what to do with them. When we were created, 
God created plants before he created humans because he knew that humans needed plants to survive. So he didn't create our bodies to be able to process artificial ingredients. So our body sees that artificial and it just says, I don't know what to do with that. I'm just gonna dump it into the colon and get rid of it. So why is Young Living different? Our supplements use whole food sources in fruits, vegetables, herbs, and roots into our supplements. And we also infuse our supplements with essential oils. So as we know, the oils are the life source of the plant. So those are being infused, that life source is being infused into our supplements. And the oils are extremely small in molecular structure. So they can actually cross that cellular membrane. So that's another thing with um, a lot of medications they they can't even get into the cells to um, to be processed, but that's what makes essential oils an excellent vehicle or a pathway to increase that bioavailability of the supplements, so they can actually transport that inside of the cells, so that our body can actually use that. So on our supplements, we have lots of supplements to help the the digestive system. Um, for the digestive system to work, we need to move the food. We need to chew up the food, eat up the food. We need to keep the colon clean and we need to have a healthy environment. So we have comfort tone, which moves the food. We have lots of different enzymes that help us eat up the food. We have a product called ICP that helps scrub the colon. So, you know, most of us eating that sad diet, we've got that glue in there. The ICP is going to help scrub that colon out. And then we have probiotics. So um, stick with me to the end because I'm going to, I'm going to highlight a little bit about probiotics at the end, but that's, you know, we hear a lot about probiotics out in the public. Um, you know, our bodies have a lot of bacteria, good and bad. We want to increase the good to keep the bad bacteria in check. So you wanna get a good probiotic on board. Um, Life9 is our, is our main probiotic. We also have a kid's probiotic um, that's in a powder form that's kind of like a pixie stick. So, so Comfort Tone moves the food, enzymes eat up the food, ICP scrubs the colon, probiotics maintain a healthy environment. So any of those products I could talk a whole class on. So what I'm focusing on tonight is the enzymes because I never really thought that they were that important because nobody ever talks about them. But it became important to me when I started having bowel issues. And I promise you, I won't go into any gory details, but I will share that, um, you know, remember we talked about everybody should have one to two bowel movements a day. Well, I was having like one to two a week for years. And I knew that wasn't normal, but of course I was, I was like most people, I'm like, eh, it'll be fine. But I finally got concerned this summer. I was bloating. I wasn't feeling good. I decided I probably should get this checked out. So even though I'm not 50, had a colonoscopy. Everything turned out fine, thankfully. But what they did find was that I have a very, very long colon. He said my colon is actually about twice as long as the average person's. So I got to thinking, well, that's not good because then now it's going to take my food twice as long to move through my body. So I better be doing something to help support that. So I started looking into enzymes and I've tried several of the young living enzymes and I've kind of gotten down to um, a routine that works well for me. So everybody's different. You need to experiment for what works best for you, but I'm going to go over um, just explain what each of our enzymes do and um, you know, jot down some things that may maybe strike a chord with you and um, maybe you can consider adding these to your order. So we have two different essential zymes. One is called essential zymes, one is called essential zymes four. So I'm starting with essential zymes. This one is a dual layer tablet. So it's dual layer so that it can actually get to the intestines. So most things get into the stomach. You have the stomach acid, the acid breaks it down to basically, you know, it, it takes out all of good stuff and then all the, everything that's left goes through the colon. So it's dual layer so that it can actually 
be partially digested in the stomach. And then there's still a layer left that's actually gonna travel through the colon and benefit the colon as well. So this one's good for everyone, especially those that are eating that standard American diet. It works best on an empty stomach. So take it between meals. It supports and stimulates your body's ability to make more enzymes. So it helps your body actually produce its own enzymes, which will reduce pancreatic stress because our pancreas stores enzymes. So because it's actually boosting your body to do more of its own work, it's reducing that stress on the pancreas. Um, it also goes after sick and dying tissues. So it breaks down the hard shell of the cells and gets rid of the cell waste. So essential zyme four is actually good if you eat a lot of protein or fat. It's multi-spectrum, so it digests fats, proteins, carbs, and fiber. It's also dual, dual time release, so it breaks down the foods in the stomach and the colon. So I brought these to show you. It comes in a blister pack like this. And I don't know if you can see, one of them is kind of gray, one of them is kind of orange. So you just break off um, two of these. You take both of those at the same time. One breaks down in the stomach, one breaks down in the colon. So you take those with two of your largest meals of the day. So it breaks down food you're currently eating. So I personally like these just because of the convenience factor. They're in this blister pack, so they're easy to travel with. I can take them both at the same time and I can take them with my food. It's just easier for me to remember to take it with food versus the other enzymes are best on an empty stomach. Um, and essential zymes four will also break down toxins and bacteria. We also have another one called Mighty Zymes. It's actually in the kids line. So it's a chewable tablet, breaks down proteins, carbs, and fats, and it is a broad spectrum. It also has the least amount of oils of any of the, of the enzymes. So it's good for sensitive stomachs. So it's not just for kids. If you have someone who has trouble swallowing pills or if they have an extra sensitive stomach, this would be a good one to start with. Next one is called Allerzyme. It's the strongest of all of our enzymes. It's the only vegan option. It has the most enzymes of all and the most essential oils. It breaks down sugars and starch. It's best to take it early in the morning or between meals on an empty stomach. And it's also really good for anyone who has allergies or is lactose intolerant. So if that, if that fits you, then um, Allerzyme would be the one to try. And the last one is called Detoxzyme. This one's vegetarian based. It's mild, so it's really good for sensitive stomachs. It's just an overall general good enzyme. Helps give us access to nutrition in the hard to digest foods. So if you eat a lot of beans, nuts, seeds, that sort of thing, um, this would be a good one for you. This one's really good to take before bed because it gets rid of what's left in the digestive system. When I read that, I thought, okay, that sounds really good for me. So I've been taking detox I'm right before I go to bed at night. And I'll tell you, I've been getting good results in the morning. Let me just leave it at that. So I think it's doing a good job of eating what's left in my colon and helping move things um, right along. And another interesting, interesting tidbit is that Ningxia red also contains digestive enzymes. It's also really good just to keep things moving. I learned that when I was at convention and I mean, who doesn't love Ningxia? So they have this Ningxia bar there that just, it's like this free flowing fountain of Ningxia. So I just kept going back and going back and I thought, well, Ningxia is good for you. It's who doesn't want more Ningxia? I probably drank a whole bottle of Ningxia that day and oh, mercy, let me tell you. <laughs> things were all moving that night. And I decided maybe a whole bottle of Ningxia in a day is not what I should do on a regular basis. So if you have trouble getting things moving, pull out your Ningxia Red and up the dose. Um, another interesting little tidbit, um, you know, I talked to you about how the teeth and the saliva are part of the digestive system. Um, just the way our brain is geared when we're chewing, it stimulates our brain to say, okay, there's food coming. We need more saliva to break down the, the food that's coming in. So are there any teeth grinders in here? People that grind their teeth at night? 
that's actually the body's way of telling you that you need enzymes by stimulating chewing. So it's it's your brain telling your, your mouth to, to chew more because it's trying to stimulate more enzymes. So, so if you're a teeth grinder, I would definitely recommend looking into some enzymes. So let me make sure I got through all of my notes here. Um, so I promised you some testimony at the end, little tidbits. So if you're not ready to dive into the enzymes yet, um, many of you on here are already members. So I'm assuming you have a premium starter kit or your starter bundle. So you already have two gems right there with you. Digize, obviously, just from the sound of the name tells you it's um, supportive of the digestive system. So you can just take a drop of Digize, rub it on your abdomen in a clockwise direction because that's the direction that your colon are already moves or you can take the Vitality version in a capsule or put it in your Ningxia. Peppermint, same thing, rub it on your abdomen or take the Vitality version in a capsule or put it in your um, anything you're drinking really. But I have a fantastic little tip for you that we use in the hospital and I tried it at home and it works like a charm for me. Um, if you find yourself needing to relieve yourself either urinary system or digestive system. If you need to relieve yourself and need a little help, put a drop of peppermint on the toilet water and then sit down on the toilet and see what happens. We actually use this in the hospital for patients because it's non-invasive, it's not actually on them. And I will be interested to see your results because I've been very pleasantly surprised with um, what I've seen. And a bonus, your toilet water smells like peppermint. So a little testimony on skin. I mentioned how the digestive system is, you know, if you're having skin issues, check, do, do a gut check, check your gut health. So I've been wearing a mask every day to work. I was having that lovely mask chin. Anybody else sporting one of those? When you're wearing a mask, 40, 50 hours a week, you get this nasty, angry chin. So I had actually gone to a dermatologist and she said, um, you know, even she, she was like, I'm not really sure if, you know, it, it could be this, it could be this, it could be this. Here's a prescription cream you can try. I'm not sure if it'll work. So I tried the prescription cream. It really wasn't working. I tried some oils. I tried frankincense. I tried myrrh, get a little bit better, but not, it really wasn't getting to the core of it. So I decided to just double my probiotic, my life nine. I was taking two capsules a night instead of one. And literally within about two days, I could see a mark, market improvement. And after a week, I would say that my chin was 80% better, just simply from doubling my probiotic. So that made me a firm believer that gut health is really helpful with skin issues. So just consider, consider your probiotics if you're having any kind of skin issues. So that's all I had for my content. I'm curious if anybody, if anybody has any questions or if they've tried enzymes, if they have any comments kelly we got a couple of questions i say for you um first one was any certain type of water that you should be drinking in your um half of your body weight in ounces do you have any recommendations um i know a lot of i've done some research on distilled water i know you shouldn't drink distilled water constantly regularly i know a lot of people have the berkey filter um some people drink you know there's there's pros and cons to bottled water. You know, it does, it is in a plastic bottle. So there's some risk there. Um, again, I would just do research. I drink tap water to be completely honest. I know it's probably not the best for me. We are actually kind of looking into some filtering systems, but I would just, uh, just kind of do your research on what you're comfortable with. If you're comfortable drinking from a plastic bottle or if you're looking more into the filtration system. I, just to add to that, I think there's a website, if you go online, you can actually type in your zip code and it will show you your tap water quality. Um, so I think that's just interesting to do 
for everybody because it could be completely different for everybody here on this um, the call. The second question, which was a great one also, um, was about, you said you were taking Detoxime at night. So were you taking the Life9 and Detoxime together, spacing those apart? What was your yeah. protocol for that or recommendation? That is, that is a great question because actually I got most of this information from um, Jessica Danielson, very knowledgeable on all gut stuff. And so I had asked her that specifically because Life9 should be taken at bedtime on an empty stomach. So I always take it right before bed. And I said, is that okay to take them together? And she said, yes, because they're actually doing two separate things. So the, the probiotic is just populating good bacteria in your body. And the detoxime is just digesting food and stuff that needs to be digested and, and gotten rid of. So they actually complement each other and you can take them together at the same time. Good questions. Has anybody taken any enzymes? Have any testimonies? I know Kelly, you like the essential enzymes four. You were the one that kind of introduced them to me. We've taken all of them. Our dog use, takes um, detox time. And my husband and I usually do the, yeah, essential enzyme four just because of the convenience. Mm -hmm. I know some people really like Allerzyme if it's a dairy issue. That seems to be one that um, kind of helps for that more than others. I've heard from other people, so. And I'll throw in one tip that I remember learning directly from Gary Young. He, he was a huge, huge fan of Detoxzyme. And I was always kind of having my mind repeatedly blown by his recommendations because I would think, oh, I'll take two of these or whatever. And it was Gary who said, you know, when you really need to help move stuff in your body, take 10 or 15 detox signs before bed. And I'm like, man, I'm playing so small. Like, <laughs> no wonder he was so brilliant. Um, but it, and I've also, here's another thing, um, your leader, Britta, taught me something big about Life9. And that was another one, like one a night for many, many, many years. And Britta um, has been wrestling for a while with kind of drainage and, and you know, sinus stuff. And she started taking, I don't know if it was four or five life nine every single night before bed and it made a huge difference to her and i'm like why had the thought had never even crossed my mind that we were permitted to take more than one of those a night yeah <laughs> i don't know why i feel like i need permission to up my my dosage but that that can make a big difference and apparently the the threshold when you can tell that your body has had enough life nine is when you're bowel movements start to become more loose, you'll know that you've reached that peak. So you can back it down one step until you, you find that, you know, happy spot. But sometimes you do just need to flood the body with nutrition and with enzymes to, to kind of get caught up if we're behind. So I just thought I would throw that in that you are allowed to do more than what it says on the box or the bottle. Yeah, that's a good point. I have heard that. I was just gonna. Sometimes they call it, you know, just like a like a bomb. They say, you know, just even if you feel your immune system kind of getting down, feeling weakened, and you know, we can up lots of other things like our ningxia or whatever. But consider taking like five or six life nines for just two or three days, and I had never thought about that. I think that Skyla, I was I kind of had the same thought of you, and this was a transition that I had to make. I think coming from that traditional medical model where a doctor tells you what to take, how often and how many and when to stop, um, you know, transitioning over to getting your own research, knowing that we have awesome quality supplements and, um, you know, doing what you feel like is best for your body. Um, you know, the, what's, what's listed on the bottle is just a recommendation. And a lot of times that's directed by what the FDA says. 
and you know, it's only 12 and up. Well, what if you're 11 and a half, you know? And so I think transitioning to that, like you are your own best advocate. If you guys are here listening to this information, like that's the best thing that you can do. And don't be afraid to take, try taking one more, you know? I mean, like you said, most supplements, the worst that's going to happen is you might have some loose stools, which you probably need it anyway. So just not to be afraid of that. So, hey, Angie, we had a couple more questions. Um, Lisa asked um, if it's okay to take Life9 and Immupro together. Yeah, I saw that. The only thing that I've heard Life9 to try not to take it with other oil supplements. So, you know, especially inner defense, that's, that's entirely oil. So I would steer clear of that, but I've not heard Immupro being an issue at you ladies. I agree. Same. And in, in fact, sometimes I will take Immupro and Life9 together on purpose if I want that immune support function. Um, but I don't want to take inner defense at night close to that Life9. It's just because it's so oil heavy and it's kind of like supporting your immune system, but getting that good bacteria and they kind of counteract each other. And so you kind of level them out and don't get the benefit of either one. It's kind of my, my impression. One other person said that they don't digest anything well first thing in the morning. Any, any um, recommendation for that? Yeah, I would say try the detox time at nighttime. Maybe you're just, maybe you just have a lot of buildup overnight because that's another thing. Our systems get very acidic overnight because that stomach acid is just sitting there not digesting anything and so that was another recommendation too again the digestive system affects so many things and i could literally have a whole class on all of our multiple multiple supplements so alkaline is another really great one that i learned oh, yes. um, you know disease lives in acidic environments so cancer actually thrives in an acidic environment and most of our bodies because of our our nutrition and our extra our nutrition exercise level and um, just the toxins we're exposed to, most people are very acidic. So you wanna to try to alkalinize that, bring it to the other end of the scale. So alkaline scale is a great one to either take right before bed or I've been taking it first thing in the morning. So if you're having trouble in the morning, I would focus on what you're doing, what you're putting in your gut overnight to let your gut work for you while you're sleeping. Try the detox sign, maybe try up in your your um, life nine. Yeah. Another, one other just tip I have is to, you know, try not to eat. I don't know what you do, but try not to eat, you know, within a certain time frame of going to sleep. So that your body actually has that time to digest and, and do the work that it needs to do um, at night, making sure that you're getting enough sleep. Our body actually, you know, there's a reason we need eight hours of sleep and it's so our body can repair all of the things. And when we don't get that, a lot of the things that we need that rest and rejuvenation doesn't work well. And one little tip too, um, you know, we're, we're in such a, a world of an immediate fix. So we're used to taking a medication and seeing an immediate response. So you have a headache, you take a Tylenol and 15 minutes later, your headache feels better. Well, that's because the medication is masking a symptom supplements are completely different. They're not like medication at all. So a lot of times you may not necessarily have an aha moment of, oh, I took a life nine last night and I woke up this morning and I feel a whole a world better. You may not necessarily have an aha moment because number one, it's just simply bringing your body back into a normal state. It's not it's not meant to give you a false feeling like medications do. And number two, it takes time. So, you know, our liver processes things, a lot of type things take about three months to get completely fully into our bodies. So, you know, sometimes you have to take a supplement for two to three months before you really, you know, you think about the damage we've done to our body over 30, 40, 50 years, we're not going to fix it after taking a supplement for a week. You know, so I would, I would encourage people to to stick to a regimen for at least a month, ideally three months before you really decide that, okay, maybe this isn't working for me. I'm going to try something different. One thing just to add on to that, that I like to just remind myself is what are you actually supplementing? You know, supplements, if you are supplementing an already healthy lifestyle, the things that you're putting in your body are going to work easier. 
you know, but if you are taking essential zymes, but you're still drinking Mountain Dew, used to be a Mountain Dew drinker, fast food, no exercise, not drinking enough water, you know, all the things you're supplementing basically just to get back to baseline. So I think, again, we have this mentality in our culture of just, I'm going to do this one thing and it's going to be the magical fix. But when we look at the big picture um, of, you know, that the whole word supplement is that you are supplementing other things. <laughs> you're supplementing your diet. You're supplementing the healthy things that you're doing. And so I think just remembering that um, can be really helpful and just, you know, doing all the things that we can to really help our body thrive. One of my favorite quotes was from Ed Daly. He said, you can't out supplement a bad lifestyle. So you can't just, I mean, I'm not perfect by any means. I still eat bad stuff. I could exercise more. I could do more. We're not perfect, but it's all those little choices that we make throughout the day that are going to make a difference. Good discussion and good comments. I think, did we get through all the questions you think? Looks like, all right. So I will stop the recording. Thank you ladies for joining. Feel free to share the recording with anybody that you think might benefit. And um, thanks for hopping on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you.